Hello, my name is Yemi. And my name is Ichoma. And together we host Africa in My Kitchen, a podcast that is produced by Tunuka Media. This fun podcast explores meals from each country in Africa. We talk about the country, discuss the meal itself, and draw from our experiences to share why we are, or are not, excited about the meal. A new episode airs every two weeks. So John is for the hits, the misses, the laughs, and the cringes as we eat our way across the continent. Come back often, share with your friends, and add the podcast to your regular podcast rotation wherever you listen to podcasts. Now, it's time for this week's episode. Hi, friends. Hello. We trust that you're doing well and maybe getting ready for the holidays in whatever way you can. We know it's been a rough year globally, but weirdly, I think this year has taught us to not take things for granted. And so for this holiday season, I'm choosing to be grateful for what I do have and to remember all the things we can no longer do that we took for granted so that when this is over, I will appreciate these little things even more. Yeah, and I choose to be grateful for time with family and friends, you know, living away from Nigeria, I'd always thought and taken for granted that, you know what, when I need to, people just hop on a plane. Mm -hmm. But now having that taken away has really brought a different outlook to how I look at certain things. So yeah, I choose to be grateful for that. Anyway, our proverb for the day is this. The bee that is forced into the hive will not produce honey. This proverb comes from the South African country we are in today, a country called Iswatini. And if you've not heard of this country before, you may be more familiar with its old name, Swaziland. For a feature Swazi dish, the plan was to make Sichuala. But as we'll tell you about later, that's not quite what happened. Nope, it was not. Swaziland was officially named Iswatini in 2018. The people of Iswatini are mainly from the Swazi tribe, and the language of the Swazi tribe is called Swazi or Siswati, or Swati. The country takes its name and language from Nswati II, a 19th century king who expanded and unified much of the Swazi territory. Iswatini is a landlocked country bordered by Mozambique to the northeast and by South Africa along the other borders. Because of its closeness to South Africa and Mozambique, you will find people who speak Portuguese, Africans, and Zulu in Iswatini. Eswatini was a British protectorate between 1906 and 1968 when it became an independent country. The government is an absolute monarchy, which means it is ruled by a monarch who holds supreme power. But every five years, House of Assembly and Senate majority are elected. The current monarch is King Mswati III, and he has been the ruler since 1986. Swazi cuisine is similar to that of its neighboring countries. Beans, maize, sorghum, sour milk, and dried meats are pretty common. For example, you can find umkweba, spelled U-M-N-C-W-E-B-A, which is dried uncooked meat that is marinated in vinegar and spices. There is also karo, which is an ostrich steak. On the more vegetarian side, you can find Umbidvo wetinsanga, which is cooked pumpkin leaves with peanuts. This is either in kwankwa or in shwanshwa, which is a sour porridge made from fermented cornmeal. I'm just going to take a page out of Yemi's book and spell it out. Yeah, you do that. I N C W A N C W A. And then there is sly, which is a salad that's made from avocado, peanuts, lemon juice, and ginger. That sounds absolutely delightful. And refreshing. You don't agree. Okay, it's delightful and refreshing. It's sly with meat. Now, Yemi, do you feel better if we had meat by the side? Yeah, it's okay if you had meat there to be nicer. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, like we said, the plan was to make Sichuala. Everything we could find explained that Sichuala is a stiff porridge that is made of sugar beans, also known as red speckled beans, and maize meal. Now, the maize meal is similar in texture to, say, cornmeal, but it's a little bit lighter. It's white in color. So you are supposed to take these two things. You soak the beans for a while, and then you boil the beans until it's soft, and then you stir in the maize meal, which is like from corn, obviously, 
and it becomes like a stiff porridge that you can have with a stew or a sauce or a vegetable. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. We checked, I think, three or four different sites and all of them kind of supply the same thing. Mm -hmm. Now, it was difficult to tell how stiff it was supposed to be because all the different pictures of Sichuala, Sichuala made by Swazi people looked different. So Mm. some were thick and stiff, almost like you would have like a fufu consistency. And some were like a porridge that was like thinner in a way. So I went based on quantities and I ended up with a somewhat stiff porridge. And we'll have pictures of this as well for you to Mm -hmm. see. Yeah, for sure. Um, What I thought about it, I had it with some pork and some greens because I saw online that that's how you eat it. Mm Mm-hmm. I wasn't expecting it to taste like much. It's literally just corn meal or maize meal with beans and salt made into a stiff porridge. Mm -hmm. So the understanding was this is more something that you have to eat with an accompaniment, maybe a stew or a sauce or something like that. Mm -hmm. So it didn't really taste like anything, but I wasn't expecting it to taste like anything. Mm -hmm. What did you think about it? Well, for me, I didn't have it with a stew, so I think I played myself. Um, well, I played I, you. Let's be honest. I told you. Yes. Well, I thought the, the thing said eat it with greens. Well, you didn't tell me which... Greens can be anything. Spinach, kale. So I had mine with kale. There you go. And I played myself. Okay. You know, I think the beauty of this meal is that it's a product of what you eat it with. Yes. Right? If you have it by itself, it essentially... It doesn't taste like tofu. But it has the characteristics of tofu. So tofu essentially takes on the flavor of whatever mm, you put it is. in or whatever you eat with it. Now, the problem was your girl over here they didn't have it with anything. I just had it with kale on the side. Well, that's kind of what I did too. Really? Literally, it was steamed, steamed I think it was Brussels sprouts mm. and pork. Ah, now oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so when me, I had it. Because for me, when I think of an accompaniment, I think of like a stew that is more soupy or something like that. And I would put it on the side, Mm -hmm. you know, and mix it together or something like that. But it seems just dry. Mm. Dry is probably a good word. Yeah, I was thinking of a good word, but I think dry and it just seemed... It's like if you eat mashed potatoes and greens. Oh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Just eat mashed potatoes. There's no gravy, there's nothing. No gravy, nothing. Exactly. Ibijama, God will bless you for this description. I have have sense. Mm, You do, you do. Ah, may your days be long. Amen. So it's like eating just mashed potato. Don't even add butter to the mashed potato. (laughs) You understand? Just eat the mashed potato and just put greens on the side and just eat it together. So you you know it has potential. You're just like, dude, if you just put in a little work, you can get there. But it didn't quite hit it for me. It did not quite hit it for me. It was a little bit, it was just, it just seemed, yeah. I just, yeah, no. Okay. Now, if this seems strange to anybody who is Swati mm-hmm. or who is familiar with this dish called Sichuala, it might be because apparently what we made was not Sichuala. Yeah, we made the wrong thing. Well, <laughs> honestly, Ijama, I'm going to give Ijama credit. I don't usually do, but I will give her credit. There isn't a lot of documentation. No, there isn't. So you think it's one thing and you make it, and Ijama, good on you for making both attempts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to get into that. All right, go. Cool. Because so basically what happened was we don't, I don't know anyone who's from Iswatini, but we do have a South African friend. Mm-hmm. And so I was struggling and I made the dish and I said, well, does this seem like anything that you have seen before? Because in that part of the, the continent, there is a bit of a melding of the tribes. So someone who's from South Africa might have experiences across multiple tribes, mm-hmm. right? And she looked at it and was like, the shwala apparently is what pap is in South Africa, which is literally cornmeal that has been made. You add water to it, you make it into a stiff dish and you eat it with a gravy or a stew, kind of like the way we've described a mashed potato. So she did not understand where the beans was coming into play. And she was like, it's like you made sishwala and added beans randomly. And I said, well, no, this is what the internet is saying. She's like, nope, everything on the internet that you've just seen is wrong. Yep. So that was apparently wrong. So I said, well, what is the correct thing? It was a whole dramatic situation. She started calling a bunch of people because she didn't know anybody who was from Iswatini either. Mm. But she called a friend who knew someone who called a friend who called a friend who called a friend. And I think they eventually called someone's mom. Yeah, I, I, they actually ended up calling somebody in South Africa and possibly somebody. In, I don't think they called somebody in Iswatini. But what she explained to me was, well, your instruction said beans and mealy meal. Mealy meal is not the same as maize meal. 
Mm. So mealy meal is like dried maize that is a bit rubbery. Mm-hmm. And so that was what she was expecting to see. Yeah. And she said, well, it looks like you made half of one dish and half of another dish. Mm-hmm. So we decided to make a second dish. Yeah. And <laughs> big shout out to everyone that helped us because <laughs> this is the stuff that goes on behind the scenes. You know, mm. when you're this research, it's not for children. No. <laughs> to cook. I, and part of me wanted to be like, okay, I'm done with this. We're just going to pass this off. But I was like stressed about it. I was like, no. So let's look at something else. And we found out that, so basically, if we're making Sichuala, it should have just been dried maize meal. Mm -hmm. Now, beans and corn together is a completely different dish. And here's the fun fact. We're not actually sure what it's called in Swaziland or in in Eswatini, but we do know what it's called in South Africa, and that is Sam. Mm -hmm. So we made Sam, which was a second dish. And that is you take mealy meal, which my friend was so kind as to give me, some of because I was so traumatized I was like I'm not going back to another store it was hard enough trying to explain what I wanted mm-hmm. the first time because when I went into the South African store the first time I was talking to the proprietor and he said well what grade of maize meal do you want and he started saying a whole bunch of South African words that I didn't understand and I was like I, I don't know which level I want so <laughs> she gave me <laughs> so she gave me um some mealy meal which like we said is like husks of dried corn that's a bit rubbery yeah and it is not ground down fine it's just like a smashed but not naturally fine ground down yeah it's like if you almost like if you chop like you know how you have a kernel of corn it's almost like you chop it in half yes exactly yeah that's kind of like bits of corn that have been chopped in half um and again it's dried now how you make sam is that you soak it with your sugar beans for some time most people do it overnight so I think I soaked it for about six hours. You soak them together and then you boil them with um, together with salt and with water. Mm-hmm. Now, some people choose to add other things to Samp as they're making it. They add some vegetables and they add some other things to it. But I tried to do it in its simplest form because I was tired. Mm-hmm. So the other thing I read is that to add more flavor to it, you can use broth. Mm-hmm. And so we cooked it down with some broth. I had some seasoned broth from making chicken or something before. And cooked all of that together, and we ended up with Sam. Yeah. Yeah. So you are getting a dish from Eswatini, at least something we thought was a dish from Eswatini, mm-hmm. and something we think, well, something we know is a dish from South Africa, but might also be from Eswatini. So, yeah, yeah come on this crazy ride with us. It, it, it was fun. Um, oh, I learned a new word. So the Sam is called, I feel like I have to say it because I took so much time to learn how to say yeah, it. Yeah, you practiced. Yeah. Mm-ko- oh, man, I've, I've messed it up. Ngo mm-hmm. show. In Sosa. In, in Gosa. Oh, God. Gosa. X-H-O-S-A. Gosa. Mm-hmm. It's called Ngosho. So that's what we made, the second dish, Sam. So that's the South African word. We don't know what the Swazi word for it is, but we do know that it is eaten in Swatini. Mm-hmm. I liked Sam much better. Um, I loved it, actually, considering that it's beans, corn, and... Yeah, that's surprising. You don't like beans. I know. I don't not like beans. I'm just not crazy about it. Oh, okay. But I really liked it. It was, I liked the rubberiness of the corn. Like it was quite chewy. And it's a very interesting texture because I usually don't like corn. I can manage sweet corn, but I hate corn on the cob in any form. But yeah, I you don't necessarily like chewy food anyway. I know, I don't. But this one was Who fun is to this eat. this person? I don't know you. No, well, I don't know. This one was fun to eat. Like I liked the, con- the, the process of eating it. It was kind of chewy. Yeah, I'm going to say you've been abducted by aliens. I don't know who this person it's, is. It tasted like a, like a, it was, it wasn't bland. It was mild. I think that's the word I'm looking for. It's very mild mm-hmm. and it takes on the flavor of the broth. I think my broth was a teeny bit salty. You know, you're not having the reaction to, to this that I thought you would have. I actually had the whole scenario played out. I was going to ask you, so Yemi, what did you think of Sam? Mm-hmm. And then you were going to be like, it was so good. And I was going to be like, booyah, do you know why? Because my broth was very flavorful. Because normally beans and corn and salt won't taste like anything special. Wait, you had our whole conversation planned. pre-planned in yes. your head. I was okay? going to roll it out and be like, it was because of my broth that took this dish to another level mm-hmm. and everybody from Esatini bow down to me because I've taken over your dish wow. and I own it now and if you want to eat it I can charge you for it that Ooh, was how this was okay. supposed to go All right. so but. that said Yemi what did you think of Sam and choose your words carefully <laughs> well I don't know what to say after he said all that it's not like you're the <laughs> goddess of Sam I don't know what to say it was you know I need. I feel like I need to move a further okay, I'll away. Close my eyes. I need to move further talking. away from you before I make a comment because I feel like you might actually like physically hurt me. I will <laughs> not. My eyes are closed. Okay. 
Um, I did not hate it. I felt the broth was a tad salty. It was actually. <laughs> so salt, salty, you know, over saltiness aside, it was interesting. Um, for the longest time, actually, I had tasted the wrong dish and I thought, oh, this is what it was. <laughs> Um, but apparently I just tasted the same dish twice. Um, but this I thought was pretty interesting as a beans dish. I grew up eating beans and corn. My mom made it quite a few times. So it didn't seem like it was new to me. The only difference was that it was much sweeter than I would have expected it to be. Like as in sugar? Yeah, it seemed as like, almost like a sugar. Maybe it's the beans. They know they call it sugar beans. Oh, yeah. Makes yeah. sense. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. It was much sweeter than I'm used to because our beans are that we eat. Well, the beans I grew up with in Nigeria have a different, they're not sugar beans. They're a different, they're brown with a black eye, but they're really tiny. I, I don't know what the name is. I'm not even going to try to look it up, <laughs> but it was good, honestly. And it's beans with corn. It wasn't um, super foreign to me. And again, honestly, Food is pretty amazing. Like, it blows my mind how food can be so similar across different parts of the continent and even the world. Because mm -hmm. I ate it and I was like, well, I might as well be at home. Like, it did not feel different, you know, except that my mama's food is not salty. But apart from Salt that... Salt aside, though, weren't there other flavors in the broth that came through? Because imagine eating that and then imagine eating beans, corn, boiled in salt and water. Wouldn't there have been a clear difference? Let me think. What? You have to think about this. I'm not cooking for you again. Uh, uh, how will we continue the podcast? I don't know. You will, I'll, You can interview me and I'll tell you about the taste. No, 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 no. We don't do that. <laughs> no, that's not good. No, I no, was I good. was like, my broth elevated this dish. What, was, what did you put inside bread. the broth? I don't even remember. It was from a while ago. All kinds of spices. I used it so, to make very so spicy So, Madam fried Queen chicken. of Sam, how are people supposed to get another version of it if you do remember what it was? It will be revealed to me. Okay. I have revelations. There, there are all kinds of spices. There's probably like some curry and some stuff that you would use to boil your chicken. Because mm. I don't I don't use... Um, well, it was a chicken broth, right? It was a chicken broth, yeah. Yeah, so the chicken flavor may have come out a little bit. Uh -huh. Yeah. Keep I going guess. on that trajectory. You know what? The chicken flavor may have come out. I feel like I'm being bullied into this <laughs> opinion. <laughs> like, you don't want me to just like say, yeah, it was cool. <laughs> like, okay, it was the best thing since... You know, since the, or something. Or since <laughs> since the, the fake Sishwala. <laughs> it was the best thing. Since since the best. That was like punishment. <laughs> oh, Lord. It was like I was eating punishments. I'm sorry, you guys. And it's not even the real Sishwala. So it's, yes. not, it's not like we're insulting your food. We literally made the, made wrong, the wrong thing. thing. In fact, so, we manufactured our own dish. Yeah, we made a whole new dish. That doesn't exist. <laughs> and I think, again, it brings home how initially this started as an exploration of like, it was like a self-exploratory journey. First for me and then for you as well. Mm -hmm. But in doing this project, we've seen how much more documentation we need to have yes. when it comes to African cuisine. Because the fact that it was actually quite difficult for me to find something. Like there were lots of dishes. Don't get me wrong. There are lots of dishes out of a Swatini. But I was hoping to find something that was uniquely Swazi and was exactly. not like found in Mozambique or South Africa. Yeah. Because South Africa, we know, has a lot of dishes. Mm -hmm. But this is its own. This is a sovereign country. Yeah. But there isn't a lot of information that we can find specifically on the Internet. Now, there might be books mm -hmm. um, on it. But the way the world is going, unfortunately, people aren't reading. We need to have stuff like this online that is searchable. Yeah, exactly. So we don't, uh, maybe we should try and make some Swazi friends because clearly this is not helping Amata. Yeah, we dumped the South African one. Wow, I didn't say <laughs> that. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, that said, this brings us to the conclusion of our trip to Eswatini. As always, thanks for joining us. We will see you again in two weeks and we hope you have a wonderful Christmas. Stuff yourself, silly if you can. And if you're lucky to be around people you care about, first of all, give yourself a huge, big, tight hug because you're doing a great job and self-love is absolutely important. You can also hug your loved ones, I guess, extra <laughs> hard, <laughs> just to remind them you love them. I mean, it's Christmas. We're in a given mood. Yeah, give them a hug. Not a Christmas <laughs> gift. A it's hug. a hug. Okay. It's 2020. It's true, life it's, is hard. All they're getting is hugs and smileys. They should be happy, actually. Exactly. On that note... Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays!
Thank you for listening, friends. As a reminder, the podcast is released every two weeks. Follow Tunuka Media on social media, including Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter to connect with us and be on the forefront of upcoming shows and program schedules. Links are in the show notes. Africa in My Kitchen is produced by Tunuka Media and co-hosted with 234 Pantry. So while on Instagram, follow my page, 234 Pantry, for more food-related content and fun facts about dishes and ingredients. Tunuka Media also produces another show called Overlooked, which I host, with more shows on the way. Like and subscribe, and if you learn something new, support the show by giving Africa in My Kitchen a high rating wherever you listen. This helps the show grow and gets more people, just like you, to learn also. So until next time, bye! bye.